Hello, Opa. Hi, Louis. I see you're coming to Greenville in January to do a, a talk on your book. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I've been meaning to come to, one to come to Greenville for a long time. You know, that's where I grew up and, mm -hmm. and became a Baha'i. Mm -hmm. And so it was feels really nice to be able to have something scheduled at the center. It feels good. When I mm -hmm. first heard of you, I immediately just assumed that you were named after Louis Gregory. It's a coincidence. It's <laughs> Louis because that's my grandfather's name. It's, ah. it's, it's spelled with an S, but it's not. No, I, I'm the first behind my family. Okay. You never know. But, yes. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm very happy to have that name. My mother also has the, the name of a hand of the cause. She's Martha. But it's all coincidence. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, you can you call it coincidence. What, you know, <laughs> I, I, everything is. Both of my parents' families knew about the faith before I was born. You mentioned Mr. Gregory. It just reminds me of his story of how the man at his office was uh -huh. telling him she should go to a Baha'i meeting and said it several times and finally, to, as a courtesy to his friend, yes. he went, but he had no intention of really listening to it. Yes. You know, but, so, hey, you know, famous last words. I wanted to get a sneak peek. What can we expect? What are you going to be focusing on? going to be based on the book, some highlights from the book, but I know the book has so much history in it. So have you thought about what you're going to focus on yet? I can tell you some about what I've done in previous book talk. So in the past, I've given kind of a kind of an introduction, a discussion a little bit about Lewis Gregory and Alonzo Twine from Charleston, you know, the first person to become a Baha'i here, and something about his story and what happened to him with a focus on the spiritual underpinnings of historical processes, uh -huh. kind of looking at history with not exclusively material eyes, but mm -hmm. how is history, a, you know, an operation of the spirit in the world, and I've used Alonzo Twine as an example of that. He ended up in an asylum, I think? Yeah, that's right. And so sort of the, the power of the example is that to outward seeming, he was gone, mm -hmm. isolated, uh -huh. you know, died a miserable death, and then forgotten, right? right? Because even the Baha'is didn't, by the time there was a community in, in South Carolina, even the Baha'is didn't know that he had ever existed. Yes. But in a way, his sacrifice waters this tree, you know, that yes. comes later. Yes. And so then some other stories that I could tell as well, the real high standards that the Baha'is had mm -hmm. for building interracial community, even when it was extraordinarily difficult and it went against not just like the regional mores, but yes. also against their against people's own personal, what people were comfortable with. Yes. And the Baha'is in South Carolina who participated, this was a part of setting a standard for the region because everybody noticed how the National Assembly handled the situation. So I think part of the reason the Baha'is were successful at all mm -hmm. was because of the intervention of Abdul Baha and Shoghi Effendi. Right. And keeping things on track. And yes. And insisting and insisting and insisting. So that's an example of that. And that, so I've told that story recently and people seem to appreciate it. So those are some of the things that I have in mind. And I guess what does any of this have to do with contemporary concerns? Yes, yes. But because we're so not finished with Yes. How do you get people to be friends with each other across these lines? 